Thank you for joining me for evening prayer on Sunday the 24th of April, the second Sunday of Easter. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Sovereign Lord, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. To you be glory and praise forever. From the deep waters of death, you brought your people to new birth by raising your Son to life in triumph. Through him, dark death has been destroyed and radiant life is everywhere restored. As you call us out of darkness into his marvellous light, May our lives reflect his glory and our lips repeat the endless song. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Our psalm this evening is Psalm 16, 1, 6. The Lord is at my right hand, I shall not fall. Preserve me, O God, for in you have I taken refuge. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord. All my good depends on you. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble in heart. Though the idols are legion that many run after, their drink offerings of blood I will not offer neither make mention of their names upon my lips. The Lord himself is my portion and my cup. In your hands alone is my fortune. My share has fallen in a fair land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel and in the night watches he instructs my heart. I have set the Lord always before me. He is at my right hand. I shall not fall. Wherefore my heart is glad and my spirit rejoices. My flesh also shall rest secure. For you will not abandon my soul to death, nor suffer your faithful one to see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is the fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures for evermore. The Lord is at my right hand, I shall not fall. Let us pray. Give to us, Lord Christ, the fullness of grace, your presence and your very self, for you are our portion and our delight now and forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. God raised Christ from the dead, the Lamb without spot or stain. Alleluia. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading. Kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation 
ready to be revealed in the last time. You were ransomed from the futile ways of your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without spot or stain. Through him, you have confidence in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. God raised Christ from the dead, the Lamb without spot or stain. Alleluia. Our reading this evening comes from Luke's Gospel, chapter 24, beginning at verse 13. Now, on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognising him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognised him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. What has changed? 
the disciples had been following Jesus for about three years. They had witnessed miracles, people have been healed, people raised from the dead. They witnessed his authority over creation. They had heard him teach with power and authority. And yet, it had all seemingly come to nothing. They watched as he was arrested, offering no fight against the authorities, offering nothing but silence. He had been beaten, whipped and humiliated and was hung on the shame-filled cross like a criminal. He was dead. There was no doubt about that. Most of the disciples had scattered. They abandoned Jesus, probably fearing that they were next. The empty tomb, while an instant celebration for us at the end of Holy Week, for us millennia after with the benefit of scripture, of tradition from the church fathers and mothers, from the working out and reflection of others. But for the first disciples, it was mind bending. They simply didn't understand what was going on. This was so far away from what they had thought. Understanding that Jesus had been raised to life was just not in their sphere of thinking. But not only is the tomb empty, but Jesus himself appears to them, to Mary in the garden. But she doesn't recognise him until he calls her name. To the other disciples who think they are seeing a ghost. To Thomas who says, I need proof. And this wonderful event of Jesus appearing to Cleopas and the other disciple on the road to Emmaus. They too do not at first recognise him. And much has been debated and discussed about Jesus's resurrection body and what our own resurrection bodies will be. We can wait with anticipation for the answer to those questions. But we are told Jesus interpreted the scriptures, beginning with Moses and all the prophets. He opened for those two disciples how the scriptures spoke about him. Frustrating, I think, it's not recorded for us what Jesus said to them. But we do, what we do know is that we can search the scriptures and find Jesus. We can search the scriptures and see our God. And then comes the breaking of the bread. Their eyes are opened and they recognise Jesus, their Jesus, their friend. Alive, not dead, no ghost, but real, solid, alive. What had changed? In a word, everything. It may have taken the disciples some time to work out what had happened, but when it became clear, they went out and proclaimed this Jesus, who once was dead and is now alive. This Jesus, who forgives our sin and draws us back to the Father. The disciples then went to the ends of the earth, proclaiming the risen Jesus, because everything had changed. What has changed for you 
this Easter. As we walked again through the journey of Holy Week, we too, like the disciples, will not be unchanged when we see our risen Saviour. But like the disciples, maybe we need to set aside what we think we know and let Jesus interpret for us the reality of the kingdom of God. The Magnificat. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Alleluia. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. Alleluia. We come now to our time of prayer. I'll be using the response when I say Lord of life. The response is in your mercy, hear us. Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. On this day that the Lord has made, let us pray for the people he has redeemed. That we may live as those who believe in the triumph of the cross. May this Easter time change us. Renew us, refresh us. Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. That all people may receive the good news of his victory. We pray for our parish. We pray for all of those who do not yet know Jesus as their saviour. Equip us to go and tell of this Jesus, who is not dead but alive. Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. That those born to new life in the waters of baptism may know the power of his resurrection. For all of those recently baptised, for all of those recently confirmed, for each one of us, remind and renew our baptism vows. Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us that those who suffer pain and anguish may find healing and peace in the wounds of Christ. We remember those who are particularly on our hearts this evening. We 
Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. That in the undying love of Christ, we, be, we may be united with all who have died in the faith of Christ. We thank God for those who we love but see no longer. For those who have been a witness and an example of Christ's love in our lives. Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Let us commend the world in which Christ rose from the dead to the mercy and protection of God. We continue to pray for those parts of the world in war and conflict. We particularly pray for the peoples of the Ukraine. And we remember all of those who are fleeing their homelands, who are refugees. And we also pray this night for our brothers and sisters who are persecuted for their faith. Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness, that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth, through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thank you for joining me for evening prayer this evening and I hope to see you all soon.